Hi, this is Rick Keen from Rick Keen Music Scene. I'm with Norman Marshall Wilder. And Norman started playing, started musically when he was eight years old, singing and dancing. Took up the drums at 16. 12. 12. And 16 professionally, right? Yes, I was in job at 16. Okay, so why don't you tell everybody how you uh, your first start into music as far as uh, who did you play with in Montreal? Well, uh, let's start uh, uh, my whole music career from the beginning. My brother was a tap dancer, so he taught me how to tap dance. And uh, like I said, I used to do singing too, and I played, uh, studied with Daisy Peterson piano. And, uh, all along, I was playing a little drum. By the time I was 14, 15, right into 16, I started dropping new jobs, you know. So I hadn't really started. Uh, there were so, so many uh, musicians I had a chance to see play, musicians I had a chance to work with. And by 19, I was on my way on the road, you know, so I was doing a lot of traveling. And uh, people I met, uh, I didn't give me a name, but there were like too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this? This would be in the, in the 50s, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. In fact, I started listening to it in 1959. <laughs> 12 years old. By the time I was 16, I probably had 200 albums. You know? right. and, uh, but back in that time in Montreal, that's when jazz was, was thriving, right, in the city? That's here. So who was the first, who was the first uh, big name that you remember working with like, when you first got your start? Big name? Big name. Uh, let's say uh, Ray Draper, Jackie McClain, Julius Walker. Charlie Rowe, uh, three other musicians. Rowe, around that time I was 19, I did a series of Sunday concert. Charlie Biddle, Charles Coleman, and Nelson Simon. Those were big names to me because they were all older than me. <laughs> but, uh, so those were all guys that you looked up to? Yeah, right? Yeah. The first uh, six, seven musicians, they were all from the USA, yeah. coming up here to do one day concert, you know. But uh, I've, I've had a very, very good career. And uh, it's just, uh, like I always say, I, I have so much to say, but it's only a limited bit of time. But then time when people get to, to know me, and they want to come on, come on and take, take some of the story. And uh, later on, when I get a little older, there will probably be a book for me, you know. Uh, but I can't wait for that to start happening. In the next uh, 75 years, we'll have a book, right? <laughs> so, so uh, as, a, as a drummer, who were who the guys that you looked up to as drummers? Well, jazz well, my, my uh, teacher by listening to how to play, learn how to play. When my artist, I was Blakey. That's the style I play. You know? 55 too in my book. Um, Blakey, Lee Morgan, uh, Hank Mowgli. You name it, I got to, you know. But the other thing I would like to say is where can I work with five musicians, six musicians, sometimes seven musicians? I'm trying to find a place to do that. See, what, 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 what I'm trying to start here at this wonderful big church. I had to come in here and talk with the, the minister. I said I would like to try to start something. Maybe two concerts a month. To see how it goes for the summer. Now, that is, is nobody else is doing that. I don't think anyone else is doing that. But I want to see if I can get it started here, because I've heard so much about this church for so many years. Even when I lived here, you know, I never got a chance to come by here and see it. So if I could get something lifted up off the ground, the church, maybe I'll try to it. Maybe down the old Montreal. Had it, uh, even in St. Ali, you know. But uh, there, there's just just so much uh, going on there. And you know, every time I go once in a while to, to hear music, Monday night, Tuesday night, sometimes Thursday, a ton and ton of musician, but not enough places to play. Yeah, in this city, there's so many talented musicians. Yeah. Like you said, because uh, I think you sent me in, in your email that you back in 30 years ago you were making $100 a gig. 
gig, right? I was doing that 50 years ago. 50 years ago. And four or five times a week. That was a gig. And four or five times a week. Yeah, sometimes. Right. Yeah. So but now, so what you're trying to do basically is to have a, a place in the church, which is the St. James Church. St. Yeah. James. To uh, bring musicians that want to play and yeah. give them a place to play, basically, right? And one that you don't mind coming in and uh, taking the part, you know, lifting up the part and uh, take half and give half for the church, you know. Because I know uh, Reverend, if you remember his said here, uh, they help the poor. You know, some of the things that they do around the church here is if someone is putting on a concert, they appreciate that the musician take the money and split it. Church so they can help the poor people around in the, in the area. Sure. And that's pretty good. I like that idea. So basically, if people come here to see you play, yeah. there's going to be a fee. Do you know how much that fee would be? Oh, that, that, that fee is going to actually be uh, like a donation. Right. Uh, well, I'm asking you just to let people know how much you think yeah. it would be. It's going to be like a donation. Okay. So, so people are going to take half, and the church will take, take half. Right. So people are going to come, and then you're going to yeah. be giving the money to the church, and St. James Church gives money back to the poor. Right. And uh, if, if it goes good for July, then we might buy for August, in September. Something to keep it going. Right. To help the church. Sure, he can help us too. Yeah. So when, <laughs> when is the first day that this will be happening? Uh, it will be uh, July 16th, July 30th. So all o'clock, one hour concert, right in the big church. And, uh, uh, four, four, three, four, three musicians plus myself. Um, uh, Andre White, piano. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Uh, it'll come. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric Legassi. <laughs> Eric Legassi. Eric Legacy. Okay. Have you heard of him? Yep, I have actually. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. Well, he wants him, my cousin Oliver. Does he? Yeah. yeah. And his cousin is Oliver Jones. Yeah, good. And uh, uh, Giovanni Valdez and Sax and myself. So for the first two dates, it's uh, going to yes. be that fourth? No, no, the second date, it's at the end of the month. I have uh, Felix Stucci on piano. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be, uh, and, you're, and you're, like you said, you're hoping this is going to grow more and more people here of it. Yeah. So you get more and more musicians to come down and play with it. Yeah. And uh, I, I find that uh, I have to put house the jazz off and on yeah. you know, uh, with my own uh, trio or quartet. And also I get uh, call house drummer. Mm -hmm. You get calls from this guy in my car, you that guy. You know, so. Get a little bit of work. I'm happy. That's good. And you have a show coming up in the House of Jazz as well. That's right. Which is a tribute. That will be yeah, yeah, and Horse Silver. Horse Silver. So what date is that? Uh, that, that? That's July the 2nd. July 2nd in the House of Jazz. Yeah. And it's a tribute to Horace Silver. Why don't you tell all the people who Horace Silver is? Yeah. Uh, how, how many people have heard of that? <laughs> who is Horace Silver? Well, well, Horace Silver was one of the... Uh, First jazz messenger, piano player, would I believe? Okay. Way back in 1952, 53. Okay. So, uh, he had a lot of records himself. And he just passed away, and uh, uh, it's been quite a few years since I've seen him, but uh, I still have contact with other New York musicians. And, uh, what else did I say? Uh, it's nice to know. Once in a while, I could do a tribute. Right. So you know, when I was back in Toronto, uh, for many years, I, 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 for 15 years in a row, I did every October, anywhere between October 11th and, uh, and the day he died, which was like a week later on the 17th, we think, you know. So I did that with six musicians, myself, five and myself. And we just did open up the book. We play one to two and have fun. You know? but, uh, now I'm back home here, but we well, trying to find somewhere where I can do that come October. <laughs> so when did you come back to Montreal? Well, 
I got back. I, actually, I started coming back a little bit two years ago, Louise and I, you know. And, uh, George heard me play. He heard me play and uh, kind of liked it, you know. So I, I, I told him, I think I might feel like coming back home, you know. Uh, you know, he talks with that, that voice, you know. <laughs> so, I moved here a few times, and when I finally brought all my furniture, it was last year, September 17th. So I've been here about nine months, about ten months. Yeah. So on July 2nd, at the House of Jazz, yeah. what the uh, people that are going to go to see you, and that's right in the middle of the Jazz Festival. That's right, yeah. So jazz lovers, make sure you head out at 6.30. Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, 6.30. 6.30, 6 6 July 2nd. At 9 o'clock, yeah. What, what, how long are you playing for and what, what are people going to hear? They're going to hear, uh, they're going to hear quite a few tunes by Horace Silver. So it's all Horace Silver tunes? Yeah, yeah. Got about, about, we got, we got time, probably about 10, 12 tunes. Okay. Within the two and a half hours, you know. How many musicians will be playing with you on that? It'll just be uh, three and myself. Okay. So now you're considered to be the Canadian Art Blake, right? Well, I've been called that for many, many years, uh, Canadian Art Blakey, you know. <laughs> so why don't you explain to people that don't know? Because Art Blakey has a, a jazz drumming style, yeah. which is bebop. 